Hey guys, I'm Caleb Kosterke and this is Proven Progression. Today I'm going to teach you guys how to do downhill hopovers. We're in uh, Revelstoke, BC and uh, it's springtime, but I think there's going to be some fresh powder up high and should be pretty good conditions for teaching. Dude, it already turned to snow. I think it's gonna be pretty good up top. It's looking promising. We're at like 4,000 feet and the rain already turned to snow and we're into good snowpack, so I'm optimistic. <laughs> What do you think, Zach? It's so good for April. Awesome. The end of April. Great towel, man. Ew! Downhill hopovers are one of my favorite backcountry maneuvers. They are extremely practical for riding in tight trees or through pillow bands because it allows you to pivot your sled 180 degrees in a really tight space basically no matter what the slope angle is. Regular hopovers are obviously a phenomenal tool, but they are a little bit limiting. You can only make them so tight, and then sometimes the uh, conditions are just too deep or the hill is too steep to execute that maneuver. And that's where a downhill hopover is extremely practical. The first time I ever did a downhill hopover, it was actually on accident. I was riding a 2018 Cat and holding a really steep side hill in deep snow and the sled just kind of like flipped over backwards on top of me. I was like, wow, that was weird. Like the, the sled came straight over and kind of pivoted off my body and landed in a side hill. And I was like, man, if I could do that smoothly, this would actually be a practical move. So I sessioned this hillside uh, several times and finally got one where I actually hopped over the seat and executed it um, extremely smooth. And then it started clicking after that and I started using it um, in the trees. Let's talk about sled setup. You don't want to ever have to change your sled setup to do a maneuver. If you have to do that, then that maneuver is not going to work when you're in technical terrain and need it most. But I'm going to give you a few tips uh, for setting your sled up that might make this a little bit easier. One of the keys to doing this maneuver is getting the front end um, vertical and getting the sled basically straight up and down in a side hill. So the more the sled wheelies, the less slope angle you're gonna need to work on this maneuver. You can make your sled wheelie more by increasing the preload in your front track shock or by decreasing the preload in your rear track shock. You can do this maneuver on any track length it's probably easiest on a 146, but you should just learn this maneuver on whatever sled is your daily driver. The deeper the snow, the easier it is to do on a longer track. So something I look for on a practice hill is a relatively clean open slope in case you lose the sled. And then you want something that has gradual increase in slope angle. So if it's a little shallower at the bottom, you can kind of start working on the maneuver there and then take it to steeper terrain as you feel more confident or as you figure out that you need um, a steeper hill to create that ski lift. So this hillside we have right here is actually uh, really good for working on downhill hopovers and this is what I'm going to use to demonstrate the maneuver. For learning this maneuver, I like to be side hilling basically horizontal or maybe at a little bit of an up angle. It's kind of de going to depend on the snow conditions. So I'm side hilling at a slow controlled speed. I decide that I'm ready to get my ski lift. So what I do is I pull back on the bars, give it a bunch of throttle and that front starts coming up. I'm also going to turn the sled into the hillside just a little bit and that's going to really exaggerate how far the sled comes out of the snowpack because the sled is turning and chewing uphill just for a split second. And then as it's chewing uphill and chewing up out of the snowpack, I dump the front end downhill. This move comes down to timing. 
It's all about the timing of when you decide to throw that front end downhill and let the track pivot around. If you do it too early, you end up kind of just falling downhill. And if you do it too late, you end up kind of mouse trapped underneath the sled. So you have to find that happy medium between those two points. When you're learning this move, it's okay if your sled trenches in and does it in kind of slow motion and you kind of have to like force it around. That's a good way to kind of get a feel for the maneuver. When you get to the point where the sled's kind of popping out of the snow and dropping down, like my downhill hopovers, that's when you want to start working on the footwork. My best recommendation is to wait until you feel that skid rebound and time your hop with the rebounding of the skid. And that rebound happens shortly after the sled goes vertical and kind of in between being vertical and falling back down on the panel. I want to emphasize how important this little turn uphill is that I did. You can see my side hill track tracking straight, straight, straight. I turn uphill for about three feet. I get the ski lift I need and then I dump the front downhill. The angle that your track is in the snowpack determines how the sled pivots around. Now you have to let the sled and the track rotate Obviously I'm exaggerating this, but you have to let it rotate a little bit like this and chew through the snowpack and chew around to come down. If you leave the sled pulled into the hill and at this camber where it's pulled into the hill, you're gonna end up just doing a downhill wheelie or the sled's going to flip over backwards on top of you. So that camber of the sled matters a lot and you wanna think about it in terms of the track and what angle that track's at chewing through the snowpack. I think that made sense? Yeah, it did actually. It's like a high level aspect of sledding that I only go over with like super advanced clients and advanced clinics, but it's a game changer. You can apply this technique to downhill wheelies, side hill wheelies, bow ties. People don't realize how much control you have, even with the skis in the air. Your balance point on the sled is different than the balance point of the sled in the snowpack. So the sled can be tipped one way and you can still be neutral. I hope this video helps you guys work on your downhill hopovers. Uh, drop a comment and let me know how it went during your practice session. And if you want a little extra help, keep in mind I teach uh, advanced riding clinics and we go over this move in all of my advanced clinics.